Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and iOS 17.3 has been released to the public a few days ago. And of course, with a lot of people updating to this new software, there will be a lot of users that work will experience bad battery life on their device. So in today's video, I will show you guys a few tips and tricks that will help you fix the battery drain issues on your iPhone running the new iOS 17.3. And here's the first of them. First of all, if you have ever installed any of the betas of iOS 17.3, you need to make sure that you get out of the beta. How you do that? Well, you go to settings general and you go to software update. If you still have the updates for the betas enabled right here, then you should see the RC version right here. And if you haven't installed it, you should do it right away. Well, if you have actually updated to the RC version, that means that you're out of the beta and you won't get a public release of iOS 17.3. Just make sure that you're not on any of the betas. Make sure you either have updated to the RC or to the public version. And if you no longer want to continue with betas, you go here and turn them off completely. So when a new beta from Apple gets out, it won't get on your iPhone. Now the next thing you should do, which is probably the easiest one, is what Apple says when they release a new software release. Well, you should wait for three or four up to one week for the new software to set in on your iPhone. According to Apple, this has been confirmed by Apple, your iPhone might drain the battery faster when you install a new update in the first few days until the update settles in on your iPhone. So if you're experiencing really bad battery life in the first days after installing iOS 17.3, just give it some more time and take a look on the next days if the battery life of your iPhone will actually improve. Now, when new releases come out, like iOS 17.3, one of these big releases, a lot of the apps will be updated with new version to actually work better with the new software update. And a lot of the popular apps will always get updates after new iOS update. So what you need to do is make sure that you have all of your apps up to date. The way you do that, head on to your account here under the App Store and make sure you update all the apps which have updates after you have updated your device to the new iOS 17.3. If you don't want to bother with them, you can of course always turn on automatic updates here. So you go under the App Store settings and you will have here app updates to turn that on automatically. And whenever a new update for an app comes out, it will automatically be installed on your iPhone. Now, as you probably know, with iOS 17.2, Apple has released the new journal app. Now with the journal app, Apple has added some new settings with iOS 17.3. So head on to your settings, go under journal right here and you will have journaling suggestions. Now right here, we'll have the suggestion settings and what you will see here is a lot of things that will be going on in the background with the journaling app. So you will have here suggestions from activity, your media, your contacts and your photos. So you will have a ton of stuff that the journal app is looking around for is trying suggest to suggest you different stuff and of course all that will consume battery in the background so take a look here at these settings if you actually don't use the journaling app just make sure to turn them off completely right here that's maybe the best way to go otherwise just choose whichever ones you know you have to use Next up, we're moving under the general settings and with iOS 17.3, Apple has added a new feature for AirPlay where you can now AirPlay to TVs on a, on a hotel room. So basically you go here under AirPlay and handoff and you will have automatic AirPlay, which means that your device will automatically start AirPlaying. What I should think you should do here is just completely turn this off. You can even have the ask option but in my opinion the best option here is to turn it to never so it doesn't consume battery trying to connect to different tvs whenever you go to a room that way you will only enable this when you actually want to use it and you want to airplay something to one of your tvs or on a hotel room now the same goes here for the name drop feature. So bringing devices together is a new feature that Apple has added to iOS 17. But if you have used this feature since the beginning of iOS 17, you probably know that a lot of times you will do this accidentally. Whenever you just place it on an iPhone next to another and you have something on your screen, it is trying to share it. Make sure you have this turned off. You will probably use it very, very rarely. And in those cases, you can actually turn it on manually if you want to use it. That's the best way to go. You don't need to have this feature just looking around for different phones to share something all the time. 
that consumes CPU power and of course a ton of battery. So make sure you have this off as well. Now what I suggest you do when you try to actually just reduce the amount of battery that your iPhone will consume. It doesn't matter whether you're an iPhone on iOS 17.3 or any other iOS version, try to use Wi-Fi as much as possible. Cellular data will consume a way more battery than Wi-Fi will. So whenever you're at your home or at your work or any place that you know you have a safe Wi-Fi connection, make sure you use that connection instead of just using cellular all the time. Cellular data, again, will drain the battery out of your iPhone. Now, when it comes to cellular data, here's another option that I suggest you change. So when you go to cellular under the settings app and you go to voice and data, you will have here, of course, a few different options from 2G up to 5G auto. Now, if you have 5G in your area and you know the coverage is good, I suggest that you keep it on 5G auto. Never keep it on 5G on because it will all the time try to stay connected to that 5G connection and it does really drain the battery out of your iPhone. But even if you have 5G but you know the coverage is really bad, it's not that good at all, then my suggestion would be you better use LTE or 4G. It is way better than having your iPhone drain your battery like in a few hours because if the 5G reception is really bad, it will just drain the battery out of your iPhone because it's trying to stay on 5G all the time. In the meanwhile, the connection is not that good, it's very poor and it tries to stay connected and it does drain the battery a lot. Now, another thing I suggest you do is head on to your privacy and security settings. And then here under location services, you will have a ton of things here that are using your location, especially of course apps. Make sure to turn off a lot of apps here that you don't need to have location for, but also head on here to system services. There are a few things here that you can actually turn off and not let you use your location in the background. They're just consuming battery. Things like right here, significant location or iPhone analytics, or things like maybe compass calibration, things that you don't actually need. Of course, you need to keep this on for things like emergency calls and SOS, find my phone. These are, of course, things that are really, really important and you should never turn them off. But things again here like setting a time zone or significant locations, you can just go ahead and turn them off. Another thing we have here under privacy and security is something called app privacy report. Now this is a great feature, it will show you every app that is using something on your iPhone, like your data and sensors, of course, app acti network activity and all that. Everything will be shown here. So when you go to one of your apps, it will show you what that app has used on your iPhone. And of course, the minutes, how long ago it has used that and all that stuff. Now, most iPhone users will probably have this feature turned on, but never actually need it or use it. So what I suggest you do is if you don't use it and you don't really care about it, make sure you have it turned off because it will actually work in the background all the time. It is working all the time because it needs to collect all these data, that way consuming a ton of battery. Now right here under privacy and security, we will have another section called analytics and improvements. Now here are things that you share with Apple just to help Apple make their products better. Things like sharing your iPhone analytics, improve health and data, improve hand washing, for example, improve safety here, improve Siri, improve AR location and all that stuff. Just turn them off. You don't need these on your iPhone. They're all the time working in the background and of course, just consuming a ton of battery and CPU power at the same time. So just make sure you have them turned off. And last but not least is live activities. Live activities will actually use a ton of battery, especially if you have live activities that you have updating more frequently, like the one here from the TV. If you go under TV and live activities, you have here more frequent updates, which means that that live activity on your lock screen is updating all the time. Every time, of course, it is updating, it is consuming a ton of data, CPU power, battery as well. And right here, it even says allowing more frequent updates lets you see more real time information, but it can drain the battery faster, which means that you have to actually turn it off just in case you really, really need it. You can keep it on. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. And of course, subscribe for more. And I'll see you on the next video.